Welcome back, folks, to the Membership Machine Show. This is episode 33. In this episode, it's a punch-up. It's the fight of the century. It's Cadence against oh, Spe- Spectre Pro. Spectre One, whatever they're calling it. Uh, um, so, Spectre. Yeah, exactly. I've got my great co-host. He seems very chirpy this morning. He seems to be recovering from his surgery. Okay. Uh, so, I I am on the way, but it the weather here has changed to a little bit of Londonish, cold and rainy. So every morning takes. I have to be patient because I wake up and it's like opening up grandfather's old war chest, and after a while it warms up. So yeah, yeah. I always get people asking me, you know, do you like england or do you like america and they say why what you know why don't you go back to england there's a lot of people that would like for you to go back to england but the thing is i love the country <laughs> but it's just the weather you know it sounds so cliche but it's true i just i cannot face the prospect of gloom and drizzle for seven months of the year i just it doesn't i just don't find it that appealing <laughs> i i will say that chicago is nice from uh, global warming standpoint and so forth because there's a lot of craziness that happens but because we're in the middle and anchored by the lake we've got fresh water when the temperature rises most of the time that's okay and when the temperature drops we're like we've already got that but right now you know the stuff everywhere else on the extremes is where you got to watch out the coasts and stuff and maybe london as well you know they they don't know what to do without air conditioning there right yes so um sorry that you haven't you haven't logged into this week for in weather. We are actually going to go back on the subject. Um so in this show we're going to be talking about the difference with what is now called um classic editor and full site editing, which I think causes confusion in its own right. Um you know, we got the new kind of um, Gutenberg block editor. What if what should you know if you're looking to build your membership website and WordPress? This is causing a bit of confusion. Hopefully, me and Spencer can clarify things for you. Um, it should be a great show. But before we go into the meat and potatoes of this particular episode, I've got a couple of key messages from our major sponsors. We will be back in a few moments, folks. This podcast episode is brought to you by Lifter LMS the leading learning management system solution for WordPress. If you or your client are creating any kind of online course, training-based membership website, or any type of e-learning project, Lifter LMS is the most secure, stable, well-supported solution on the market. Go to lifterlms.com and save 20% at checkout with coupon code PODCAST20. That's PODCAST20. Enjoy the rest of your show. We're coming back. Just want to point out, I've got some great special deals from the major sponsors. Plus, I've got a curated list of all the key plugins that you need to know and use to build your great membership website on WordPress. To get all these great goodies, all you have to do is go over to WPTonic slash wp slash tonic dot com slash deals wp tonic slash tonic dot com slash deals and i muff that up but you get the gist don't you you're clever you're listening to this podcast uh, um, <laughs> so uh, what i thought we would do spencer is uh, in the first part of the show we just talk about um the difference which and try and give some light between this term classic editor and full site editing um which i think the term the terms themselves are totally understandable but i think they they are causing a lot of confusion they caused a, a fair bit of confusion to me but i think i've clarified everything in my own mind and then i thought in the second half of the show we can Look at some of the key players uh, um, if you're looking to build a website, a membership website on WordPress. What do you think of that, Spencer? Do you think that's a good outline? I think that's how we got to do it because this is a topic that um, we've alluded to, I've alluded to, I've 
had great fun with my pal Jamie. I just yeah. uh, at Poodle Press, I've just notified him to get himself over here. If he yeah, we like out. a chat with Jamie. He's doing great but, work. Uh, yeah, but the the issue really boils down to this. It boils down to pick your tool and stick with it because the theme that I'm suggesting is the mantra for my 2023 and beyond in WordPress and my even not really related to but uses WordPress business is we finally got enough blocks in the Lego kit to just sell solutions with Legos or use Ikea furniture, if you will. And for many of us who make our livelihood here, as much fun as it is to debate the toys and the tools and the nuances of the politics, the truth is when it comes to day-to-day -day customers, they could give two you-know-whats about what the tools are underneath it. They just want the solution, very similar to like if you bought a car, it's great that the BMW bought all the parts from all these various other manufacturers, but the people are buying a BMW. And so I think for many of us, it's fun to have two, two brains, right? The tinkering brain and the just get it done brain. And today we're going to talk about the get it done brain. And uh, I do admire Jamie because he's like my, it's not like we're that different, but he's like the other side of the pond version of me. He's got his really clever ideas. He brought in one of his daughters to do a test and I loved it because it was the current Spectra versus Cadence. And his daughter kind of, I think, objectively chose Cadence as the way to go. Yeah, you could say that. Yeah, you could say that. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to give my own take on this, and then I, I will leave it to you to comment. So um, fundamentally, folks, um, when I started hearing the term classic editor, I thought, what they're talking about? They're using Gutenberg. Because I, I, I viewed Classic Editor, the editor before Gutenberg, and then I cottoned on that I'm behind the times a little bit, that they're utilising the, the, the term Classic Editor. And I thought, what do they mean by Classic Editor? And what they mean, folks, is the customiser. Which I, I, because I've been in the WordPress world like Spence for so long, I remember, I remember um, automatic and the um, power players pushing customizer and pushback from other parts of the WordPress community. But um, basically, customizer is a way of organizing a certain hierarchy about how you can edit your website. And underneath the table, it's linked to a template hierarchy um, that structures how you can assemble a website utilizing WordPress. And then comes this term out of the blue <laughs> full site editing, which Jamie uh, plugs endless on his great YouTube channel. And this right. just throws the baby with the bathwater out. There is no theme hierarchy. You, you just get rid of it. There is no customizer. There, there's just blocks. And what made me laugh is I, I was watching a couple um, of Jamie's videos um, last night just to prep me for this podcast, Spence. And he was trying. He was he was trying to explain to somebody new. Um, about how the things that you mustn't do um, right. if you're going to utilise a full site editor. And, it, um, and I've been in it 15 years and I had to watch it three times because I was getting confused. Wow. So God help somebody. And just to finish off, Spencer, um, this is the problem. I think um, they're, they're trying to appeal to two groups of people. There's the people that listen to this podcast that just want to get their membership website built in WordPress and start building a membership business. And then you've got the professional crowd, the implementers, the developers, the designers, those that help people build WordPress websites. And trying to appeal to the two at the same time just causes a bit of a mess, really. Um, so that's yeah. my spin on it, Spencer. What's yours? Yeah, I think we're on the same page for most all of that, except I would uh, just, I'll narrow down a little bit. Like, I can't, I don't want to speak for anybody, especially Jamie and so forth, but I think, you know, Jamie's motive, at least publicly, we haven't discussed it privately, 
seems to be he's really interested and rightly so in building a presence on YouTube. There's a couple other well-known people, including Paul Charleston and uh, Adam Presser and so forth, that have really nice YouTube presence. And I think it's good for him, good for his brand, good for his business. I'm all for it. But <laughs> when you look at what he talks about, and in all fairness, uh, I don't really have a beef with Paul Charlton because he's very clear what he's doing. He's just affiliate all over. But when you look at YouTubers, I've been very clear, and I've referred to Adam's business there and, and as well. I don't like it when people say one thing in public and another thing private. I don't like it when people throw more confusion logs onto the fire of an already raging fire of confusion. And when it comes to the WordPress community, you kind of alluded to this, and it's true. Uh, there's two columns. There's the people who don't care or know what WordPress is other than, oh, I think I heard that word before. I just need a solution. And then there's the people that are, I like to use the word tinkerers, but you said designers, developers, professionals. It's a very broad category, the tinkerers. The, yeah, but, but, so, but the, so, difference, isn't it? the difference is, let's use the metaphor of, you know, food. Okay. There's people who are make food at home or professionally or they have a restaurant or a bakery or something and people who consume food yeah that's great. And, yeah. and i think that's the metaphor right yeah so i think that's i think you're spot on there i think that's a great metaphor thanks for okay. that okay so what i'm saying is i think it's really relevant for us to talk about here and uh in general when we're referring to stuff because that's just among other things of my 56 year old you know wow what a year this has been is realizing kind of like Marie Kondo, I have to focus on where do I really want to put my attention? I have, a, I've had great fun, a great run working with people who are tinkerers and want to continually and endlessly debate like this new toy. I love that. I mean, I love that about electronics and, and gadgets and everything, but my livelihood has always come from the nine out of 10 people do not care what it's made from. They've been frustrated by tinkering. They've been frustrated by the flea market of WordPress. They've been frustrated by the politics and the infighting and like uh, the equity, you know, private equity buying this company and it's changing names. Who gives a shit? Honestly, they just want to eat the food. So for this year, what I'm saying is you can have it both ways, but just put on one hat or the other and think of it in our conversation today the same way. Because back to your last point, the absolute lunacy of what is going on in the full site editing and it's the bonk, upgrades. It's bonkers. Like, it's bonkers isn't it? Where like, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I give them the credit, they put it back, but like where they disabled short codes or like I've been raging on WooCommerce is going at a, a crazy tear to finally add Gutenberg to the front end, you know, of WooCommerce products and checkout and so forth. At the same time, there's all these people like Jamie and, and Brian uh, Gardner and all the rest and, and Matt who are pushing, let's just make a, a million different independent full site editing themes. Meanwhile, those two things don't even work together. You can't use WooCommerce's new stuff in the back end of full site editing. And you have to explain to somebody that there's like two worlds living in one box. And I just say, don't. Because I have clients, I have uh, agencies, I have people who are professionally, we just use the classic front end version with a customizer along with Gutenberg blocks and everything you want to do can be done. And I, again, have proven that in video. So that's what we're going to talk about today is do you want to go down the, the yellow brick road to, you know, ultimate Nirvana, or do you want to go off on your own path with full site editing randomness and chance because somehow you think we need another metaphor. And I clearly, well, uh, I would slightly disagree. I, I do understand if you're, uh, a WordPress designer, implementer, customer solution provider, that you would be looking at full site editing and and its promise, and you you would be salivating to some extent because it it you're not in your head. I'll just give me a second to. Explain. I'm not going to say anything. I'm not interrupting, you, but no. I'm shaking my head because what you're saying is the fallacy of the. Press. Yeah, because it 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 pushes all the right buttons, right? Um, but the problem is for though. But the thing, like Jamie was explaining, if you like set, if you go in and you muck around with the home page, you you're going to muck around with the whole website. I could just see the trying to explain this to an uh, average client that actually wants to utilize the thing for a purpose and it, 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 it 
it's a it's a nightmare. But for those that build it, they love it. Uh, um, where the middle ground, because I love I love Gutenberg, is to utilise one of the um, um, systems we're going to discuss in the second half of the show and stay with the customizer with the template hierarchy that does the job. Yeah. See, I mean, I was listening this morning on I, part of the rehab is I do a lot of walking. I love it anyway. And I, I, I love listening to podcasts and other things, but sometimes I'll listen to audiobooks. So I got Marie Kondo is known for her, you know, tidying thing. Like, does this thing bring you joy? Throw it out if it doesn't. And the essence of that lifestyle, it's not minimalism. I mean, you can see I've turned my office into a rehab center. I mean, I'm, I'm not lacking in stuff, but there's a certain logic to how many layers above the thing you really need are, are your tchotchkes and toys, right? And what we had was we had something that puts out HTML, CSS, PHP onto a page, and it was basic WordPress. Then we started getting into the plugins and then the themes. And the themes went off to Envato and became craziness, which is why I'm so against this. Because Envato Theme Forest became a madhouse of people just inventing spaghetti code solutions. And if you chose that one thing, you were married to that forever. But then we backed up the truck and started doing page builders, of which Elementor, or Divi were a few of the bigger ones. And it was like, oh, wait, maybe this is going to work out. Because we'll just use these as the like thing to make the layouts. But then the competition of not having any top-down authority came in, and we have 80,000 page builder varieties, of which five are the big ones. And we get like all this finally sorted out because somebody mad or whatever says, Gutenberg, you're gonna take it or you know, just eat this food, kids. And we're like, no, no, no. Three years later, Gutenberg finally works, and the other page builders fade off into their sunsets of their own cloud, and now some jackass decides we need to add another layer to build something to replace the customizer the templates i'm like stop we're going back in circles like right. so if you go through those layers you know what we need we need gutenberg and what the remaining legacy of the last 18 years of wordpress is and that's it stop because what happens with the themes we're going to talk about both spectra in some ways uh not the well, that's why I thought uh, that's why I thought it was important because f until last week it didn't really it did matter. It's obviously the forces behind this aren't going to back off, and they are major drivers. So no, but they might uh, drive the truck into a wall or off a cliff because who knows? That's, who knows? That's but, what's going to happen. But until last week, it didn't. But one of the biggest players have issued a full sight solution and that that is astro yeah respect, but, but, respect but, but, to but, one but pause one second hold on there's something that just happened today sorry i am going to be interrupted on this today there was an announcement maybe the news came out yesterday <laughs> that the wordpress foundation or automatic is throwing like two hundred thousand euros at making full site editing or gutenberg or something inside a drupal did you see that news that came out today no i didn't I, I got to go find the news article because like what that says to me is that most all of the motivation of this madness, you can trace it right back to the investors and the leaders at Automatic who are trying to make Gutenberg and full site editing a thing universal. We can put this in Tumblr. We can put this in well, you say that, Drupal. We can put it in Drupal. We can put it in like your, yeah. your mom's TV dinner. It's like, okay, I get that, except not at the expense of .org. And the audience that we at least have and the people who build her have to choose for themselves. But every time I see these full site editing things, I'm like, all you're doing is coming up with like, I have a computer here. <laughs> it's a pen and paper. You're coming up with like complicated ways to do what I can just do. Blink, blink, blink. That's it. Yeah. Right. So um, I think, so what is in practical terms, what is the, was I correct in what I was saying that the fundamental difference between what is now called the classic editor, which is using customizer and a template hierarchy to full site editing. Am I correct in saying that the under the cover, the main difference, it doesn't have a template hierarchy. You wow. make a page and the blocks and then you use that that, that layout for all your other pages. Am I on the right track there? 
you're you're not on the wrong track, but the way you're explaining it, I can probably improve upon a little bit by adding some details. And here's the deal. Before Gutenberg, before full state editing, this isn't you. I'm not exasperated, but like before, okay. Well, yeah, I am as well. Word, I have to say you were exasperated. Word, <laughs> WordPress founding mothers and fathers, if you know, WordPress founding people, to be fair, okay, created a, simp a system called the template hierarchy, which as a non developer, when I first started, was the most amazingly clever thing I ever saw. What essentially said is that. You can have a theme called the parent theme, and then you can even do this thing called child theming. So you can leave the parent alone so it can be updated. You make a child theme that gets just enough of the DNA of the parent to know where it's associated, but lets you customize. And in doing so, you could create what is called a template hierarchy. There was a pattern of behavior that WordPress automatically picked up on. So if you wanted to customize either an archive page or a single post page, or the header, or the footer, or the sidebar, or the, the, the search results. All of those things could automatically be done by just following a very basic format, adding in your HTML, CSS, PHP, and go to town. Magic happened. And then plugins like Advanced Custom Fields Pro supplemented that by allowing you to make visual front end containers that held variables for things like the name of the post, or the title, or the, the featured image. Now, all was well with the world, but that caused a lot of normal people to feel like a disadvantage because it's like, I don't know how to code that stuff. I don't know. So now the page builders did the same thing and they stuck themselves in the layer. But the metaphor for most of the page builders, except for Oxygen and a few other ones, was they respected the fact that people had a post type, like pages or posts or images, that you went to and you said, I'm going to make a new post. And it showed up in the editor ready for you to interact. Now, all that was happening with Gutenberg too. The difference was they just replaced the sort of long in the tooth classic editor on those post editing pages with the new Gutenberg blocks. And their motives may have been intentionally uh, to improve that experience, but th somehow they went rogue and decided we're gonna gut the whole template hierarchy. We're gonna gut child thing. We're gonna gut the concept that you modify that stuff in favor of like a new thing that makes templates but they didn't differentiate it in any meaningful way from what Gutenberg really is. So now you have this thing that's like, are we related? Are we cousins? Did you come from the same parents as me? Because now you have a whole separate type of, of themes or templates that have to be used for full site editing versus normal. And, oh, if, you, right. and, if, and, if, yeah. and if you try to use Gutenberg blocks that were built for the front end, on full site editing, they don't always work because the full site editor has different rules and different stuff. So it's like it's like one of those movies where Will Smith like has like a clone of himself younger and he realizes that's him and they start shooting at each other. It's like madness ensues. The thing they needed to do, which is what can still be done, is if you stick with all the classic history and legacy and you use a theme like Cadence that respects that, you can use Cadence to build whatever templates and reusable parts you want, header, footer, sidebar, without having to go and code it. And that's the part that mind boggles me. Why the F do we need a separate full site editing builder to make all these unique oh, so that's the fundament. That, so that's the fundamental, before we go for our break, that's the fundamental thing I was getting wrong, is that what you're saying is that the new full site editing has got a, a template hierarchy, but it's a totally different one to the classic one. No, and, what I'm know, saying no. is, let me simplify one sentence. The classic themes like Cadence that we use, that use Gutenberg as the editor, have in them, with the pro version, sure, but even basically, the ability to create your own custom header or footer or sidebar or 404 page or post type archive pages or single. They have controls built in that get picked up automatically. So you don't have to go and do HTML, but you can just use something that makes a custom post type, like a free plugin, like CPT UI or Jet Engine. Oh, I made a new one called, you know, Famous People. It picks it up automatically and lets you style it automatically. And then you just use Gutenberg blocks. So everything is at the same layer. Full site editor, on the other hand, requires you to have a special type of a theme that uses Gutenberg blocks to essentially build this whole layer below the surface of the editor where you have to customize all these things differently in order to change the layout of, I don't know, a single post or a product. And in doing so, they're not obvious, they're not clear, and it's really confusing what is actually making this modification happen in a world where 
at the front level, we finally achieved nirvana. We're a regular theme and Gutenberg made it clear. Now, the only one thing that made sense to me about why full site editing had some promise was locking the clients out of messing with the pages. But there's already tools in place to do that anyway. Like, you know, maybe they're not fully worked out, but like, oh, this, this is a custom post type where I only want my clients to just use, you know, like uh, fields and put the data in the fields and not change the layout. Okay, cool. You can do that now and it'll get better, but at least it's at the layer of where you'd expect to see it. It's not in some crazy below layer where I have to build that thing. And truthfully, the solution that they could still come up with this is if they took full site editing and all the idea of building these themes out of the front end, out of the public view, and they just made it a developer toolkit. Yeah. That, that would solve all of the problems. Yeah. Because it's not a consumer product. It shouldn't be a consumer product. It shouldn't be built into WordPress. And God knows it should not be in the repository that you have like this filter where somebody who doesn't know anything yet has to pick a full site editing theme or regular, and they don't work right if you choose the wrong one. Right, I mean, folks, you can see that this is uh, a little bit confusing, but do not worry. In the second half, we will we be were, reviewing. We were right, we were this close. We're, we're this we close. will be reviewing some of the solutions that can help you um, just build uh, your great membership website on WordPress. Have all the freedom of design, ownership, and power at your fingertips without uh, removing the confusion. That's what we're going to be about be providing in the second half so do not worry do not be put off with this i'm confused now it's a good job i got spencer he doesn't look confused he seems to know what he's talking you know about. what bothers me the most is that like i'm putting my two fingers like a centimeter apart we're this close to <laughs> finally having everything we wanted and more and then somebody unleashed this Full site editing. Yeah, but you're right. You know, the common sense thing. I understand automatics drivers. I'm not against that. But you, you just put you just put the right solution. It, the, 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 it, that setup should be put into a developer kit. Um, and what um, so that would be a sensible way of approaching it. I totally agree with you. But let's see if common sense prevails um we're going for our break folks we'll we we'll be back in a few moments we're coming back folks i just want to point out if you're looking for a great wordpress hosting provider and much much more to help you build your membership website your community website on have a look at wp-tonic.com we provide fantastic hosting that has been set up specifically for those looking to build their membership community website on wordpress plus a host of other plug-in services and help it's a great package at great value price so go over that and we'll love you to be part of the tribe so, so let's let's look at some of the solution and let's start off with one that recently has been around in the free version but they announced their pro version about a week 10 days ago um, it comes from a great um, plug-in and service provider in the WordPress space, um, Astra, and um, which um, is part of a, a, a larger company. But um, they've decided to call their full site editor, not Astra, but a totally different name, which I find causes a bit of confusion. But I suppose they had to do because they're still going to be um, supporting their, their Astra solution aren't they so it's all even for them it must be confusing so that they they have issued something called spectre one spectre it's uh, spectra but they really should have just gone with spectre i think they should have done it should they i'm, I'm taking it the probably ran into problems with the james bond uh, yeah they would get license sued, holders. they would they would get a nasty lawyer uh, <laughs> um, straight away would it but it should be dun, called dun, spectre dun, dun. Well, one of the owners of the business does look like a villain from James Bond, doesn't he? So sorry. <laughs> sorry. I don't think uh, I don't think Adam has anything to do with with the the 
they think he just partners with them for other business. I think this is oh, all Sujay's yeah. company. All right. Yeah, nice. and Su Sujay's is a real gentleman, a charmer. Oh, he's a lovely guy. He's a lovely guy. So they've issued this, and this is a full – this is a, a major player, a third-party mate. Now, I think they had the biggest um, pro sign-up in – one of the biggest players, and they have decided to throw in their tail with full sight editing. Am I correct about that? So it is significant, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yeah, this is the, the this I is mean, the nightmare coming, isn't it? It's in. Well, there's the, they don't own the nightmare, but like you know, they're in, they're one of the companies in the best position to go this direction. There, there's not a rush of big companies to go this direction. Um, but they're in a position to make it happen. But at least they did differentiate on the naming convention. I mean, I'm not against the name Spectra. It it, it rolls off the tongue. It's fine. But it's just, it's WPSpectra.com. I wonder, I always wonder this because I have the same problem too. I wonder what is that Spectra, Spectra.com. I'll get back to my point, I promise. Spectra.com. It's some weird enterprise servers and storage equipment that looks like from the 1990s. Point is, at least they differentiated it. But now we're in the same thing like my story about Costco where they sold a hairbrush for people and a hairbrush for dogs. And it's like this is a different product, different label, so it avoids the confusion. But it doesn't really make it clear if you show up at one side or the other which that there's something else to go to. And I think that's the same conversation. Like, I don't know where their business model is, but I'm sure Astro is going to continue. I wonder if I go to their website because their business name is not Astro. It's, you know, Brainstorm. something else. Brainstorm, anyway. Uh, Astro. Yeah, it's, uh, let's see what happens. So if you go to WPAstro.com, it still exists. And they don't really refer to each other. <laughs> so that's the point. Like, I'm not saying, there, listen, there's no misunderstanding. Like some companies we've harped on that are trying to kid anybody or no. fool anybody. I'm no. saying they have like two products, very specific, very different name. I, I like the logic. I respect it. Yeah. They're just taking the opportunity to provide something that's a service. It would be super cool to me, but they're not going to do it. Like if there was a, by the way, there's a full site editing does this. And by the way, there's a regular one that does that for at least in the meantime, because what I think is probably going to happen is a lot of people get confused as to what the hell's happening here. You know, they accidentally... Oh, it's, on it's going to it's gonna be a confusion fest, isn't it? Well, I mean, yeah. that's WordPress in, to a T, isn't it? Um, Exhausting as that sounds. So it's a great... Um, what I think we're saying, folks, is if you're looking to build your membership website, we're going to get some stick here. I'm going to get some stick. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to speak for Spence. I think what we're, I, I think what he would agree is don't use full site editor. So, you know, just don't do it. Um, it's going to cause you a load of confusion. And if you're getting somebody to build it for you, don't get, and they try and um, say, we've got to use full site editor. No, just don't I mean, I do wouldn't it. speak in absolutes. I would speak in terms of who are you? So if you're a tinkerer, developer, agency, you're curious, you know there's some differentiator here, use it. If you're a consumer, I would stay away from it at the moment. Maybe it'll change in the future, but at the moment, you're asking to exponentially increase your confusion because it's not fully worked out yet. And it's even for those of us who are in the field being broken on a daily basis for some core features, which... Again, uh, I'm using WooCommerce. WooCommerce is my mainstay. WooCommerce is an amazing product. They're racing forward toward version 8.0. They just moved from 7.62 to 7.8.0. Oh, and in the process, a lot of my clients had like things such as the core pages disappear from their sites. It's hard enough to keep up with the core plugins being updated, let alone if you're trying to compete with Gutenberg versus full site editing at the same time. Yeah. Yep, and I think um, and um, Astra Spectra One. Da -da 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 -da. I would never uh, say we should drink, but it's only eleven in the morning here. So. Exactly. Uh, um, so um, love them. Um, understand this. You know, you say, who's Jonathan? You're your old man. Blah 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 blah. You want to get on message? You know, this is the future, isn't it? 
And I think if they listened to Uncle Spence and they listened to reason, I think this could all work out fine. Um, but I just don't, um, I think if you're looking to build your membership website, and I, even if you're implementer, um, developer, I just wouldn't, um, if I was going to do it, I would look at what Astra's providing, Brainstorm is providing. I certainly, uh, apart from that, I wouldn't touch it with a barge pole myself, but that's my opinion, um, and that's my honest opinion. I'm sorry, Jamie. Uh, um, I just think you've lost the plot, mate. Uh, um, uh, even your own daughter couldn't make any sense of it. Uh, um, so she made sense of it. Her, his, his daughters are really. Yeah. I, I have similar age kids in college and otherwise, and it's like I think about whether I put them on, but like they do offer a very entertaining, objective thing, like. Uh, my mom, my sister's in public media. My mom does the movie reviews. So sometimes bringing in a trusted family member who you yeah. can, you know, it, it, was, it was very entertaining. It was it very was... good content. But like I always joke about, like, here's a remote control that I could probably give my mom. Here's a remote control even better that I could give my mom. Because like I joke, my mom takes a remote control and she does this. She holds her hands up, and no matter how many. I'm buttons, just waiting for the day that I do that. That would be the the end's coming quick. Uh, anyway. right, so on to the next one. Um, the Nick, the so Cadence WP and yep. free or the Pro version. Um, fabulous developer team. Um, really impressive in the great state of Montana. Montana. <laughs> uh, um. Uh, um, where the big skies and the big mountains uh, live, um, but just a fabulous um, product. Um, got some great features. I've bought into it. I've slapped some considerable money down. Uh, um, um, not a huge amount, but I've paid into it. Um, playing around with it. We're gonna be. It's gonna be animator or cadence from now on, as, far as we we are. Um, going to be providing our recommendations to our. I mean, here's the thing: like, pick a pick a building system. You know, we were waiting for all those years. Like I keep referring to, like it was three something years of us bitching and moaning. I'm like, oh my god. And, you know, Sally Getz, she was our pal. Like, was like, it's great, it's great. I'm like, it's not great enough yet. And then finally, I publicly had to say, Sally, you're finally. Your day has come because I'm finally all in. Like, this is it. And I jettisoned all the other page builders and other concepts. But before this full site editing shenanigan happened, Ben Rittner, Hannah Rittner, the team at Cadence, Kathy Zant, all the rest I work with directly. Plus, they have a few other products that I like, like, you know, Learn Dash is one of the liquid web, whatever they're called now, equity firms. Uh, solid. You got to get on no, message. No, no, solid. No, no, no. They're there's, solid. There's a new equity firm in town that bought all of them, so they're, I'm sure they're going to name it something else. No, but, yeah. but, that, but that's the um, um, that's what it's called. It's called solid. It's called w solid for the w, w, yeah. The point is, <laughs> pick your goddamn tools and just start making stuff. So yeah. what I have found is the number one thing that people who come to me for free from any number of sources and have a conversation say, so remember we talked about two columns. Are you a tinkerer? Are you like, do you want to make food? Do you want to consume food? Most of my clients want to just consume food. They just want the solution. And so by picking a stack of stuff that has a top down, like brain attached to it. I mean, I don't know. The team has a few people, but like Ben and Hannah are very active in it. And he's very vocal. I love it. We have a similar policy. Well, he's just a, he's just a fantastic guy, so the, a fantastic developer, and, isn't he? And they they give him free reign, I think. You know, and see. So the point is, finally, you've got well, very similar. But to, to be honest, just like you know, Verdi Hines at El, at Elementor, or you know, who's running a lot of that stuff, or um, you know, any of the other page builders like Divi has the founder still in charge. The point is. Whoever is at the top is saying. I'm sorry to. to yeah. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but that, the good news is, even though this is, we're discussing this madness, but the good news is we know all these people, and there are some horrible people in WordPress, but there's an enormous amount of really fantastic, talented people still in the WordPress space, isn't it? So there is hope, isn't it? Because so, there's some really quality people, isn't it? Yeah, because you understand, like, the issue is um, who's in charge of the, the channel, the vertical, right? 
And what I'm saying is the biggest problem that we've got in WordPress is that Matt is not taking charge of making it into a, 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 a SaaS, like a WAS that I was saying, WordPress as a service. And so you have this flea market. The independent companies, Sujay and, and all the, you know, and Elementor and so on and so forth, you could go down the line. They've all had varying degrees of people who have grown something from scratch into something very, very much bigger. But now we're in a place where half the internet is using this stuff. We can't still just throw people into the randomness of the parking lot of the flea market and hope for the best. There has to be somebody that comes in at WordPress and says, this is it. And that's not happening. So independently, most of the hosting companies or the bigger plug-in authors have grown teams and they're putting together their own stacks. You and I and other agencies and other entrepreneurs have our own ability to do that as well. And that's the point I'm making. Pick your poison. I love the politics and the stack and everything in cadence. And with a few other plugins, one of which I write, I can deliver to my clients the thing they want. It's a meal yeah. ready to eat. So we, I would agree with Spencer. Highly recommend Cadence WP Pro. Um, when it comes to usability and UX design, I think Jamie with his daughter proved that it's got a, it's got a quite a polished UX design and the people behind it know what they're doing. On to another good solution, one I haven't utilised, but I've seen, I've watched quite a few of the re, reviews and it's very popular and I think it's also a quality product be interesting to see what yeah. Spence is, is generate press yeah. the free and the pro version um small team but um very popular with the pro market um i think if you're building your membership website you I, I, yeah but it's a quality product what's what's your feelings towards generate press i, I mean um a legacy product tom uh who's born and I think he has people who help him on the team. But like he just grew this. Well, I mean, let's be honest. Nick Roach grew Divi along with a founder, like from just a little theme into whatever it is. I, you know, they had like over 825,000 paid clients, I think. This is a legacy of what WordPress was and how it became. Generate Press as a product is interesting. I don't have anything other than that to say in a like a bad way, but in a sort of like comparative way, I would suggest to you that there's a lot more action, a lot more horsepower, a lot more stuff going on. If you looked at the comp the competition between Cadence and Astra or Cadence and Spectra, because they have a lot more stuff being thrown at it dynamically. Uh, Generate Press, to its credit, awesome for somebody who just wants hyper focused minimalist stuff that's actually what i think it's known for so if you're just like look i just want old school kind of like uh, actually dating ourselves here kind of like genesis was originally where it was PhD yeah it's got that yeah that's well observed that's yeah yeah so yeah. it stays on track for that but you're not going to get like as many crazy clever oh this is already included in a kit of stuff that you'd get a cadence, which starts to become relevant when you talk about a solution-based thing because cadence is on board for the idea, I think Astro's going there too, of just like we own the whole, everything in one kit kind of output. And again, if you're a tinkerer, that's cool, but even more so if you're somebody who sells food to people, you could just get them on that stack and stop injecting other third-party stuff into your thing, avoiding many of the confusing, uh, confusing conflicts, which is really at the heart of the problem, isn't it? Like, if you have one company making a lot of the pieces, there's less chance of frameworks bumping into each other and so forth. And that's yeah. where I've always, you know, directed people to go. So a really quality product, folks. You could build your membership website compared to some other solutions. If somebody came to me and said, I, want, I really like Generate, Generate Press, I want to build my membership, I wouldn't have any problem with it because I think they're a quality team. If you want to get at it, I think you'll end up with a really good membership website, right? Um, it, it, I, I want to, I'll give them a high five because it absolutely does what it promises. And it doesn't do anything it shouldn't, like becoming a framework plugin or something. But somebody should understand, I think their philosophy is based upon minimalism and like yeah. super fast and clean. So that's the kind of thing they're aiming at. And it seems like they're doing a good job at it. On to the next one, Bloxy. I really like Bloxy. I haven't used it in anger. I'm busy with other stuff. 
but did a bit of a dive. Um, there's some influencers really push it, um, YouTube influencers. Um, I'm going to ask them on my other show. I do another podcast, the WP Tonic mm -hmm. show, folks, which is aimed at the tinkerers, the pro market. Uh, um, what I, I haven't used it in anger, but what I saw, it looks pretty polished, <laughs> and, I, and I liked it. What do you reckon about it? Yeah, yeah. There was a moment in time before I decided to get essentially mentally married to Cadence. That, Kate, before I got gunshot married. To I mean, you got to choose, right? You know, yeah. we all reach an age where we got to choose. But anyway, I had a really, really nice conversation with one of the founders. Uh, I don't know if the other one was there. Sergio Radu. And uh, uh, his partner's Andre. Or Andre. And uh, I think what essentially came out of that conversation is I love their design sensibilities. It's, I mean, Cadence yeah. and Bloxy are in the same, like, yeah. you feel the same. It feels really modern yeah. light. Yeah. I want to make a, a comment because, like, let's say for aesthetics between Astra, Spectra, Cadence, and Bloxy, or Generate Press. It's like looking at labels on food or soda bob, soda pop bottles, right? Like Cadence and Bloxy really nail it. Like I feel that they're super like out of the box. You could just use this stuff, just change the logo, change the image. You're good to go. I think Generate Press keeps to its promise. It feels really minimal, but that's what you want. So it's kind of like, well, cool. You're not giving me any stuff that I have to undo. Spectra Astra feels like when you look at the difference between like modern United States Air Force aircraft and Soviet Union aircraft. It feels like they got the stuff in there, but somebody just like was super heavy with putting in all these borders and frames and the choices of fonts. And it's very subtle. But if you lined up like five or six sites and you chose amongst these, I think anybody would very immediately know which one it came from. And so from that standpoint, it's relevant to my audience to say, if you start with, let's say, Cadence, or if for whatever reason you try Bloxy, you're not necessarily going to have to change a lot of stuff in order to achieve the outcome. Now, where the conversation with them ended at the time was, I said to them, I wanted a relationship like I now have with Cadence, which was I have some voice that I can get behind your product because you're responsive to what I want this to do it's not that they said no, but they didn't like jump on the let's work with Spence bandwagon and Cadence sort of did. And that might be just personality stuff. But the bottom line is I have nothing other than nice things to say about the product, but I kind of feel like why go with Bloxy when you have Cadence? Yeah, I can understand that. Um, I'm going to ask them on our show for the interview. But, uh, I think they did, they've did. they done some excellent work. Oh, you know? One thing I can add in their favor, by the way. At the time, I don't know if that's true. At the time, their free product had a lot of stuff that was otherwise premium and cadence. I don't know if that's true anymore. Mm -hmm. But at the I time, don't... this was maybe over a year ago. Let's put some wild cards in to wrap up this conversation. This, you know, um, They're out there, Divi. Um, Divi's in trans, like, in, in a transformable um, zone. Um, they haven't done it yet. They are they are becoming. They plan to become what we've just discussed. They they plan to become what Cadence WP is, or Bloxy, or Generate Press, a Gutenberg based solution. Um, but they're not there yet. They haven't. They haven't transferred to that yet they're still working on it aren't they and they're um still you still got to use their um, present solution which is short code based blah 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 am i correct about that i'm i'll say it the way i understand it because i'm not sure i don't want to misrepresent what you just said but like what i understand is Divi's original solution, which we all knew going into it, had a compromise that was like a ticking time bomb, which was they had a, a, a really elegant, that became like a model for many things, like page builder that worked either the back end or then later in the front end that output the HTML markup and so forth that you needed. In the early days, we all kind of, myself included, kind of said, well, I'm, I'm willing to essentially make a deal with the devil here that I know if I ever need to change the site, all those wild and crazy short codes that it spits out into the you know content editor i'm gonna have to rec reckon with because it just didn't output markup like normal copy paste to another website so that day came 
and they modified or did a deal that recognizes the reality of, of Gutenberg. And that is to say, even if you use Divi, I believe they've already moved to the point where it's outputting the proper, you know, uh, I, I think Gutenberg stuff. But either way, it's on the road to that. Yes. However, however, I feel they and Elementor have understood their business model to be realistic. And I think Beaver Builder and the other ones should at least publicly acknowledge this that the days of competing against Gutenberg are done. I mean, you'd be out of your mind to try to compete in the space of the editor with Gutenberg because it's there as a default. So they're just like, look, we got 881,346 customers. We're going to just do Divi Cloud. And I will say the same thing about Elementor. Elementor is 100%. It's like Elementor Cloud because it's going to be like our thing first, curated. And by the way, it runs WordPress. But when you come here, you're like, our thing first so we can control the experience and it just will run the other stuff versus you go to a WordPress site and you got to stick our thing into a WordPress site where we have no control over the variables because both Divi and Elementor, quite frankly, let's say significantly heavy layers to add in when you already have a page builder of Gutenberg you know, natively. Yeah, um, I think I have some clients that use it, that hosting us with us, and they love it, and they've got very successful sites, and they love it, because I think those that come from the more artistic temperament that's yeah. got design skills, what they liked about it is that in the editor, you, could, you saw what you were going to get in the front end, where yeah. some of the other page builders... There's a and it's one of the criticism of some of um, Gutenberg is what you're building in the back doesn't really totally represent what you're going to see in the front if you know what I mean. Right. Would you? Um, uh, I, I mean, for sure, that's the thing that you even have to do, regardless of what Gutenberg setup you're using. You have to have a second frame open to look at the result. I mean, the 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 preview mode is nowhere near representative on the other hand i mean in fairness even divi as good as it is is not 100 percent. you should always yeah. check it no matter what but i think that goes hand in hand with the fact that they have respected the community and the legacy that got them where they're at and they'd be out of their mind to just throw that away but they're also being clear that they're, they're not pretending that somehow they're going to compete in the wordpress directly you know with the wordpress editor you know, gutenberg or otherwise they're just not so that's okay, because like 800,000 people is a huge business. And Elementor, I don't know, last count, millions, of millions tens and fifteens of millions of something. So. so let's finish off with what you just saw, said, Elementor. Um, powerful, full-featured, um, kind of os we're looking like they're oscillating outside of the WordPress, but they didn't kind of through more money, more activity, go to Word, WordCamp Europe, go to WordCamp US, do kind of things outside, not totally invited in because they're seen as paras to some extent, um, but very powerful, still love it. Um, got some strengths, got some weaknesses, but it, it's a big player. And if you're going to build a membership website, you, you're not going to, you're not going to be disappointed by building it on Elementor, are you? you know, what do you reckon? Well, I have a, I have a nice relationship with a few players over there, and mm. Verdi, Verdi Hines is a good guy, and you know we've had conversations. They're Israeli. They're very sensible. They're not pretending for a second that they're yeah. doing something other than they're doing. Now, year, years ago, they had the strength to make a bold move, which was financially well worth it, to do this to the open source thing and make every one of their installs phone home for the pro stuff, which other companies would have tried to do and gotten big trouble or other companies have done. And they're going to get people like you and I criticizing them because it's wrong. Elementor did that because I think they saw the handwriting on the wall already and that people were just, you know, buying one license and giving away to 8 million people. However, Going forth, it, it, the words have been used, and I won't say from whom exactly, that clearly they understand that they're a platform. They're a, a solutions provider for who, those who like their interface, like their tools, are comfortable with the way it works. And by the way, it's also going to be using WordPress. That's okay, because it's exactly the same thing if we go back to the food model or to the car model, right? Like I myself am 
making WordPress as a service. Elementor and Divi are gargantuan companies essentially doing the same thing. They're saying, look, we'd rather our customers live in our cloud so we can give them a concierge experience with no shenanigans, no third-party weird stuff happening, no Frankenstein monsters. And that way we can charge the right price and give them what they want without all the customer support and the other hassles. And I think that's the output. That's the thing that all of us should be looking at is stop tinkering, pick a solution. So if you're a Divi legacy person and you think it's cool, go to Divi Cloud. You want to go to Elementor, go to Elementor Cloud. If you want to go into the volcano and follow people into full site editing, God bless you. But for me, I'm picking the 18 year legacy of WordPress as it was with cadence as the, the, the masthead. And then I'm adding a few other ingredients in for features, and I'm selling that as solutions to consumers. Although I do enjoy this conversation and tinkering, I get now I'm like exhausted, honestly. When I go into Facebook and there's these people who just like want to endlessly debate which new page builder to talk about, I'm like, I, I remember Dreamweaver, I remember Flash, I remember, you know, like Microsoft Clippy. I don't want to go talking about that stuff forever. I just want to make stuff and sell it and get on the Well, it's a different market, isn't it? it it's implementers, designers, developer, um, small agents. They're the ones that, because um, it's like any, um, you know, does, you know, if you've got a, a, a mechanical shop, car shop, you know, you want to talk about the best um, air tools and the, uh, the customers, they don't care. They just want their car repaired. But, right. you know, you're in the trade. So when you're talking to other people in the trade, you that's what you talk about, isn't it? I mean, it's uh, all good fun. But I mean, like when you have people, we've joked about it, but like when you have people come in and are they actually making anything to sell or are they they're just there to, for the fun of provoking people's reactions? You know what I mean? Like they're they're not outliers, but they're like literally non sequitur responses of, you know, what the what like what you start you want to use that tool like the other day we were joking about it but like if you're just doing it to make content for people to chit chat about it's fun but like if you're bringing in something that's clearly doesn't belong i don't have the time anymore for that right right so how can because i'm an old man i'm cranky get off my lawn kids right. um <laughs> so just to recap i think um i think do you want my personal opinion, folks? It's either Cadence or it's Alimator. Um, but the others, the others, if you like um, what they're providing, you've got to understand about if you're going to go the full editing. I personally wouldn't advise that at the present moment. Um, but I think all those that we have outlined, they're all quality providers. Um, you will be able to build your membership website and um, you just got to choose your poison and stick with it. I think you would agree with that when you choose your poison and stick with it. Absolutely. I mean, you yeah. know, at the end of the day, this is all just good fun. Uh, we, we both make our livelihood here. I imagine a lot of our audience is interested in something to do, either getting the solution or making their livelihood from using the solution. So, I mean, this is go back to our car and, and food. There's been historically hundreds, well, at least over a hundred years of both car pundits and food pundits, right? And shows and conversation. It it never ends. So it's fun, it's fair, and this will keep going, hopefully, for both of us until I'm, you know, too old to talk. But I have chosen that for my actual solutions and the things that I make a livelihood from that. I have so many exciting opportunities for my customers. I think, I think the, elef the other thing before we wrap it up is that I'm sure K the other good thing, if you go to a Cadence or one of the other major players that we've talked about in this show, especially Cadence and a couple of the others, is if, if you're going to go the Gutenberg, I'm sure they will provide, they might in, at some stage go full site editing, but that I think they'll provide a two-tier solution them, in themselves a, a developer toolkit and a front end you know if i was them that's what i you, because that's what um that's what wordpress should provide i think you were spot on that a developer kit and a front end i mean we've got a pro we have a problem that this is more geeky than anything but like wordpress was founded and still exists for many people in the 
haven't been here for a long time space, wherever they live in the world, as a way to do something positive, be seen, get some credibility, get involved in a bigger thing. It used to be, for a lot of us, fun and campy because, you know, it was like a smaller group and we all saw the results. Like, and there wasn't politics and there wasn't like ulterior motives and there wasn't like people doing black hat stuff. So where we live today is that the problem is that number one, there's still that opportunity that objectively exists for people who are developers and coders to get their hands into the, the actual WordPress output. But the problem is they don't study the books. They didn't read the history of where the hell we were and how we got here. And so when these things happen, like the one we're just alluding to, like some well-intentioned kid who just literally is like in his twenties or her twenties comes along and nukes the short codes or something. I'm just, I'm not picking on that person, but that's the one that recently happened. And then everybody has to come in like, holy hell, like everything is broken. It's not productive to run a framework that works that way. You know what I mean? Like you just can't do it. So my fear is unless we get some top-down direction or unless people take bold steps, like go off and have your cloud version and we make sure we don't release a new thing until we figured out all the bugs. You know, that's my one high five to WP engine. Maybe is like, unless you do that, you're at risk of, of the consequences of this kind of structure where WordPress as a framework is not being run as a top down thing. And uh, people are competing for their own interest or they just don't know any better. And all these random, all hell breaks loose moments keep happening, you know, and it's not like you can't undo it. But you have to then be like extra careful to have hourly backups and you have to be extra careful to have like tripwire warnings that wake you up in the middle of the night. Like, oh, my God, there's a word fence security breach on, you know, pod bay number two and stuff like that. Or and it's a drag. Or you can just choose a provider like WP hyphen tonic. And well, we do. Yeah, all yeah. That. I mean, you can hire somebody to do it. Right. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Uh, um, so you don't have it. You just concentrate building your membership website. But. <laughs> Um, so how can people find out more about you and what you're up to, Spencer? Uh, WPLaunchify.com or SpencerForman.com. All my social media is at SpencerForman.com. Um, I'm wrestling myself with, uh, right now, finally coming to terms with how I'm going to present or uh, output the, the, the things that I describe for my clients because I do it now at WPLaunchify.com. And I love simple naming. I love like the simplicity of how Apple did I'm struggling because I have this itch to just always have a unique domain name for every output, but like I'm struggling to keep it simple. So at least those two are always going to be consistently there. So even if there's another product or service that has a different name, you know. All right. Fair enough. Uh, we will be back next week with more advice about how to build a fantastic membership website on WordPress have the freedom of design ownership and the power of having one of the biggest communities on the internet providing great tools and services and you own it all um we will be back next week we'll see you soon folks bye <laughs>